So far, I've talked about how the application program interface with the G GPU. Let's talk into how the GPU works in more detail. As I mentioned before, the graphics processing can be viewed as if there are two shaders or processors in the GPU, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. To program the GPU, you will need to write a program for the vertex shader and another program for the fragment shader. As you can see in this example, the shading language is a C-like programming language. We have variables and a main function. The graphics processing code are all in the main function. In this example, in the vertex shader, we have variables UMVP matrix, V positions, num light, and intensity. In the fragment shader, we have V color and intensity. The shading language supports a standard data type like int for integer, float for floating points. However, unlike convention C programming syntax, we have defined the qualifiers like uniform, attribute, varying, etc. for each variable. Let's look into this data type first, and then I'll explain what these qualifiers mean. The OpenGL shading language supports the standard scalar variables like Boolean, integer, unsigned integer, floating point, and double. In addition to support graphics processing and calculations, additional data types are defined in shading language like vectors. Vectors can be of any of the standard data types like Boolean, integer, or double, and can be of two, three, or four dimensions. So, for example, what do you think VAC3 represents? It's a three-dimensional floating-point vector. Matrix is another data type defined in the shading language to support matrix computation in the GPU. All matrices are of type floating point. Matrix NXM represents n by m matrix, and MATN represents n by n matrix. So, for example, what do you think MAT3 represents? MAT3 or MAT3 represents a 3 by 3 floating point matrix. The shading language also supports arrays. For instance, Full arrays is a 3D floating point array, and this VAC3 array is a 3 by 4 array, and each element in the array is a 3D vector. We can also define a structure like in C programs. In this example, a structure called structure X is defined, and the variable X is curated. As I have briefly explained, for each variable, we have to define the qualifier for the variable. So what do these qualifiers represent? The qualifier defines how the variable values can be passed between the application program and between the shaders. The qualifier uniform means the variable can be set by the application program and they can be used in either the vertex shader or the fragment shader. It works like global variable between the vertex and fragment shader, which means the value contained in this uniform variable can be shared between the shaders. For example, we can use a uniform variable to define the object properties. Attribute is a read-only variable for the vertex shader. The application program can assign values to the attribute variables in the vertex shader. We often use the attribute variables to transfer the vertex coordinates and colors onto the vertex shader. Varying is a variable used for the vertex shader to transfer value onto the fragment shader. For example, we set the value of the variable intensity in the vertex shader in this example, and the fragment shaders can then tick up the intensity value to calculate the fragment color in its main function. Const is a constant variable. In this example, I've also defined the position of the shader as highlighted in the fragment shader. So what does this position qualifier mean? 
in the fragment shader, we can set the position as high P or highest available position, medium P, medium positions, or low P as lowest position for each data type. If nothing is set, high position is the default position for all variables. For example, we can set the default position for floating point variables to medium by adding this line, position medium float, in the fragment shader and set the position for the integer to low by adding this line, position low p int. So the position qualifier allows you to set the level or position of your variable, enabling you to define the speed of the graphics processing, because the lower the position means the faster the processing. Before we go into more details on the shading language, Let's remind ourselves about 3D graphics. If you haven't got a good understanding of this or would like a refresher, please review my course on 2D and 3D graphics. To visualize a 3D object, we have to project the object onto the 2D screen. So each 3D object model has its own model coordinate system. For example, this cylinder is defined around its own coordinate system. A vertex of a cylinder in this example are points. A vertex position is defined based on its model coordinate. To display onto the screen, we have to first project the model onto the world coordinates using the model matrix. Then project this model onto the viewer or the virtual camera using the view matrix. We can define the variable MV matrix as a combined model and view matrix for this projection. Then we have to project a 3D viewing space onto the 2D screen using the projection matrix, the P matrix. So the position on the screen, GL position, is calculated by multiplying the projection matrix with the model view matrix, MV matrix, and the vertex position, A ver vertex position. In this example, we use the function vec4 to convert the 3D vector to, into a 4D vector, which means the homogeneous coordinate for the projection transformation. Let's go back to our shading programs. As you can see, in the main function of a vertex shader, we use this equation GL position to project each vertex of the 3D object onto a 2D screen. The variable VGL position is a default variable in the shading language, which is used to set the vertex position of the objects on the 2D screen. A similar default label called GL frag color is defined in the fragment shader to represent the color of each fragment. In this example, we set all the fragments to have the color red. To simplify the calculation, the projection matrix and the model view matrix can be calculated beforehand and combined into an MVP matrix, which is then used in the vertex calculation. In summary, the vertex position on the screen is calculated in the vertex shader by projecting the 3D object model onto the 2D screen. The color of each fragment of the 3D object is set in the fragment shader in this example, all fragments will have the color red. 